Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video we are going to be doing the Power Transformer contract. So for this contract we are going to be bringing four metal beams to the Power Transformer. That is the first stage. So first we are going to turn on the generator we got here. Then let's change trucks to the Kirovitz. We are going to craft some metal beams, so we need four, two, three, four, then I didn't need to back out of that, but we'll load two up on here, and then we'll load two up on this one, that'll be our four, so here is where we are at on the map right here, and we need to go just up the road here to the power transformer. That will then unlock the second stage, which we need to go to the container search area. So if we click on this, we have a couple of trucks here. So we brought the Voron AE4380, mainly just to, to steal its fuel. It was uh, just over here. And so was the GMC MH9500, which has the crane on it. So we'll use that because it should spawn in a special cargo, I'm assuming, around here. And then we have the CAT 745C, which has the container uh, add-on. I don't know what it's called exactly, I guess. But we'll crane that onto the CAT. And I thought, you know, how often do you get to use the container add-on for the CAT? Not very. So that's going to be the plan. Then we'll have to take that back to the power transformer again. All right, so here we go. I was going to bring these both together as like a big chain of vehicles. Uh, both tractors. Actually, I should shut that one off. All right, shut it off. I was going to bring them together. That's why I turned them both on. But as soon as I started it, I'm like, wait, this is just up the road. Let me just do this separate. So this is actually the road where I parked the 57X when I told, or showed you guys where to do the living space contract, which I still haven't actually done that one on here. So this is my this is my main playthrough of the of the phase eight maps. I played when I showed you guys that how to do the living space one. I actually completed it across or I sh recorded parts on different uh, playthroughs basically because I had to go back to show you what you had to unlock and all that kind of stuff. I talked about it in a different video, but. Uh, yeah, I didn't complete it on this one because I wanted to save it for if they actually fixed it. So that it, this video, or uh, not this one, but the video that I would make about doing it would be more correct. If that makes any sense. Um, it wouldn't be like the workaround. It'd be like the how it's supposed to be done kind of thing. I think I might just cut right through this field. But yeah, I wanted to get some more uh, use out of the K700 and K7M. So I thought this would be a good way to use them. Get, you know, four cargo for each one. I could have just done one trailer, I guess, and just drove there and back and there and back. Wait, do I got a turn? Yeah, I kind of screwed that up, didn't I? I thought this went right to it. Well, wait. Yeah, no, never mind. I thought maybe the back of the field would get there, but no. So we did some pointless off-roading. Yeah, I probably could have just left it on one trailer. And drove back twice, but... Oh well, I didn't really think about it. Like I said, I was planning on doing them both at once. So, dropped the ball on my part, but oh well. You guys get to see some more uh, K700 and K7N gameplay, so... And the reason I didn't really want to winch them up... Well, two, basically, oh, basically for two reasons. So one of them is because it's not as fun when they're winched up. You guys don't really get to see the second vehicle, and they're just slower and get caught on more stuff, and this looks pretty bad in here. Uh, so it, it it's not a really good, like, showing when there's two vehicles, but I like to use two vehicles just because you can steal fuel from one and like if if this one gets stuck on the rock the one from behind me probably isn't stuck on a rock and that one can come up and push me from behind and so it's i don't know it's got a lot of benefits for using two trucks compared to like two two trailers or just one truck 
one truck and a trailer, whatever you want to say. I like using two trucks, but yeah, for this specific instance, since it's so close, I didn't want to do it. That's the second reason. It's just up the road, so I figured I'll just drive them each individually, and oh my gosh. Look how much is sinking in. Like, the tire's just barely poking out. Obviously, it's at an angle, but jeez, that is deep mud right there. Wow. Don't flip the trailer. Don't flip the trailer. It got really close. Next time I'm going on that left side. That is, that's too close for comfort. Alright, I think maybe what I'll do is I'll bring both of these in there and take the screenshot when I have both of them, but I might not. I might take the screenshot with the cat just because you don't get to use that add-on very often. I'm not really sure. We'll see, but... Yeah, I know there's a couple of you guys who have uh, completed Phase 8. And I am com completely stuck. Wow, okay. So let's winch further back here to something like this and there. Yeah, I know there's a couple of you guys who have completed Phase 8, and as of right now, I am 49% done. So, I just had to check again. Yeah, so we're 49%. So maybe after this one we'll be 50. We have like, what does it say, 49 out of 107? Yeah, mine says 45 out of 107 done. So it's not great. Oh shoot, can I get in there from here? This might be a hard, uh, hard turn. I'm going to try and cut it really close so that the second time is a little easier. Oh shoot, I got to... I didn't think about this. I got to put... I gotta put the truck into the zone. Alright, so this is how it's gonna be. I'm not gonna try and mess around with it. Okay, here we go with the K7M. And we have the single tires on this one right now. These are, or by these I mean all of my, all of the trucks we're using are fully upgraded, so this has got the best engine and stuff in it. If you guys haven't seen how good this thing is in the mud, you would be quite surprised. And it's uh, apparently better with the dualies. I haven't really tested it. Just because I've only really used the dualies, I haven't really used the singles. This is, I think, my second time using the single tires, actually. And the last one might have... It was in the last farming video that I made, which... I think this is coming out, like, Sunday, so, like, six days later or seven, maybe even a week later. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, basically the last video that I made that was not like repair or refuel related, which is, if you guys haven't checked those out, give those a look. I did, uh, did some videos on refueling and repair points and, uh, spare tires is either, if it's not out, they're coming up. So I think the spare tires will be actually just after this video, but yeah, it goes through all the different, oh shoot, there's some stumps over here. That's why I avoided it last time. But it goes through all the different repair point possibilities slash refuel possibilities and spare tire. Oh, man. Yeah, no wonder why I got all these stumps over here. Um, for each vehicle in each class. And then we do them all together. Sort of, sort of ranked, I guess. That'd be the best way to describe it. And yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see some of the trucks that stand out, like, um, I know the, the Scout 800, as far as the Scout repair points goes, was really high up there. You can have like 300, and that's surprising. Or refuel. Maybe it was fuel. 
I, I forget, I get mixed up, but this one seemed to get here a little bit faster. Maybe it's just me. I suppose you guys can probably see sort of on the video basically how long did the first one take and then how long did the second one take. I can't tell quite yet, but uh, I think this definitely felt faster. So let's just park this over here. If we can get by, there we go. Turn right. Play a little yin-yang around it. It's funny. All right, I'm gonna switch it back today, get a screenshot here. Okay, we got that done. Let's get this delivered. We got two metal beams. We'll stop, we'll uh, change trucks, deliver these two. Stage is complete. I'm gonna move this truck because it's facing the right way out of here. Okay, now we are here in the GMC MH9500. And we gotta go to... Jeez, this is uh, quite bumpy in here. Gotta go to this point and it's supposed to spawn in a cargo container somewhere. Which I don't see any cargo container. All right, I finally spotted it way out there. I just wanted to check because this trick, well, I don't know if you call it a trick, but this worked in the last, maybe not the last video, but one of the other videos, I had tracking on a different contract and it showed me exactly where the cargo I was supposed to find was located. And so this one, I actually just noticed it out there. I started looking around and it, it had the gateway marked. And then I went to the other map and it had this gateway marked. So it wasn't very helpful. But then I remembered it said uh, metal detector is recommended. And so then I looked around and I saw this out there. It's tracking a different quest and it worked. So we have to go out there and pick up that cargo. That might be a challenge with the truck we picked. But we have the cat, which is one of the better ones. So that might be able to drag us out there and pick it up. We'll see. I thought it would spawn right next to us here, but no. I think what we're going to do... And yeah, I, I told you guys I stole all the fuel out of that, that truck. That's basically why I brought it here. So I filled this one up and that one was actually pretty full. I also stole fuel from the Colob, which is just over the hill over there. So... We are almost completely full, to be honest. It's, it's very close. But this is probably going to be a little bit slow going. I should have, well, I, mean, I, I was going to say I should have planned a little better, but you can't really plan when they spawn in random cargo where it's going to spawn. So I put it close to the point thinking that that would be where it would spawn. And it's, I mean, it's relatively close, I suppose, but it's a little ways off. A little bit of a drive. I think I'm going to pull this truck all the way up just past this tree and to the right. And then I'm going to turn the cat around. Because that truck can be stuck over there, but the cat, I'm going to have to go back that way. So, th since the truck behind me will probably more than likely get stuck as soon as I stop pulling it. I'm going to try and pull it further than it, well not further than it needs to be, but sort of to where it needs to be and then I'll work around it with the cat. So we'll put it somewhere like that. And I was thinking on my way here with the cat, I I tip a lot when I use the, uh, the Azov 4220 Antarctic as well. And that's sort of the same as this as far as, you know, it's got two, well I guess four wheels in the back. And then it articulates and it's got two wheels in the front. But for some reason I never tip with the cat and I almost always tip with the... I suppose I'll shut this off quick. I almost always tip... Wait, is my attachment thing broken? It looks like it is. There's no... There's no green field. 
So I found out if I use my mouse... Yeah, see it works for some reason. Um, so that's kind of a workaround that I found if you guys have that problem and you play on PC and you use a controller. Wait, how close to tipping are we? Yeah, we're getting there. Okay, we're going to try and pull it closer to us. Oh shoot, it rolled the wrong way. Dang it. Alright, we'll try and get a little closer. There we go. I don't want to lift it too high because I don't want to tip over the truck. I'm pretty excited to actually use this uh, cargo thing on the cat. I haven't used this in frickin' forever. It's been so long. I also want to use the cat for some medium logs because I haven't done that in a long time either. That's the wrong way. But like I said, I just try and... I like to use trucks with their capability or whatever. Is that even... Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, let's stop. Let's change trucks. Let's pack. Why does that look so funny? Hmm, whatever. Alright, and I'm gonna steal the rest of the fuel out of there. Just to try and hopefully get back to where I need to go. Let's set it back to day. Alright. Set it back to day as well. But yeah, I just... I mean, how often do you use this, you know? You don't have the chance, and then when you do have the chance, I always forget about it. So I think I enjoy using the trucks that are specialized for. Like, I could use any truck with a sideboard bed and just throw these in the back and, you know, it's uh, it'll get you there. But this is just more fun to me. When you have a truck that's specialized, I, I don't know, maybe you don't call it specialized, but it's more specialized than another truck or other trucks, and you're using it for that specialization, I find that more fun. Just because that's kind of what it was made for, sort of. Ooh, that wasn't too bad. 6 and 15. I'll take that. I swear, sometimes the noise is far worse than the actual damage that you take. Alright. Let's try and get it going uphill here. Yeah, I really like the cat. This is such a nice vehicle. I say the cat, but there's multiple cats. The cat 745C. Got it in low plus with diff lock on. Trying to get up the hill a little bit faster. There we go. All right, yeah, now we're now we're into the open road for a little bit here. This road kind of weaves around down to the river or whatever you want to call it. And then we got to cross that, go through, then it's tar. Then we go through the gateway. We got a little bit more tar. We got a swamp crossing. And yeah, then the rest of it is really not too bad because it's it's tar for a long ways. We will go past the gas station and uh, we'll have another river crossing. I'm trying to think then what, uh, then we got some more tar, then we're into the place where we got both the Kirovitz K7M and K700 from, that little townish area. And then obviously you guys have seen the route we just went, so we'll be doing that again. So not too bad. But uh, yeah, these maps are a little easier. I think they're more enjoyable. Just, I wouldn't say enjoyable because they're easier, but more enjoyable because you can take you have more freedom that's that's what I mean so maybe if, even if they were just as hard as far as like uh, rocks or mud or that stuff goes at least there's a lot less trees in this oh, I hate this tree 
This thing has got me so many times. Uh, yeah, even if there's more more mud or the same amount of mud or rocks or whatever, there's just a lot less trees and you can drive up over that hill or, you know, wherever you want. It, this whole area is kind of open, whereas like, I just think of Michigan, where it's got huge mountains that you can, I mean, you can go over some of them, but a lot of them are just basically like, you're stuck to this road. Or Tamir, where there's the trees are just too heavily wooded, if that's too many trees, too heavily wooded, whatever you want to say. Um, to where you sort of, I mean, you can take shortcuts, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of paths where it's like, it's going to take you a lot longer to try and cut through there. It's not worth it. There are a couple of paths in Tamir that I take that are through the trees that it's like, like, I remember in, uh, what is it, Quarry? Yeah, Quarry, where there's one watchtower, where it basically there's like one road to get there, and it loops all the way around, but you can cut through some trees and get there and save a lot of time. I use that one every time. Okay, we're back here in Heartlands. Sometimes I get them a little bit mixed up. If I were you guys, I would try to avoid this little swamp right here. It's pretty muddy. But this hillside is... Whoa. Did I just hit a stump? Yep. But this hillside is pretty um, steep. So you gotta kinda be careful and there's a lot of stumps in here. I've taken this path a few times but yeah, there's always like those two stumps. I got stuck on both of them before. Don't... Okay, good. Just inside. Or I guess technically outside. But yeah, now we're uh, sort of on the main road. Got to take a left here. And I guess technically we could just drive basically straight there. We just got to make sure we cross the river at that one point. Which is sort of just behind that watchtower there. I don't exactly need to go through the town here, but I think I'm going to go through and just grab fuel. And once I'm done with this uh, contract, I'll probably just dump all the fuel into the generator and then just recover it. Actually, no, I don't usually recover, but I'll probably dump the fuel into it and leave it there. Or leave it around there. But that way we got a full generator again. Which is pretty much what I've been doing, you know, since I started using it, basically. I, every time I drive past with a truck, I'll dump a little bit of fuel in there. Especially if I'm going, like, towards the fuel station or trailer store, which is just off behind the fuel store. Or, ah, uh, I don't know why I called it a fuel store. Fuel station or trailer store, I got the two put together. No snorkel, but it shouldn't be an issue. I didn't drive this here. I, I just spawned in on the other map and drove it, so... I haven't gone through this crossing, but I don't think it should be an issue. I don't think we'll take any damage. I don't think it's deep enough as I take damage. I did well, I mean, I just, I just didn't think it was deep enough, but apparently it is. just barely be deep enough I guess and either way one or two or ten not gonna really make a difference there we go got through it just fine got one left I don't know why I have that marked over there I'm not really sure I don't know what I was doing Oh, we took another damage. Actually, now that I think about it, those might have been just, just, uh, like the downforce slamming down on the logs or bridge or whatever. A rock or something. I don't remember if that last one was hard, but that one, I could see it causing damage the way we hit that. 
I love the look of the wet tires, though. I just think it's cool that they, you know, sort of update with what, whatever you do. Kind of like if you get shot in a game and then you're bleeding, you know, you drive through some water, your tires are wet, or like you, you just go in a river or something in a game and then your clothing is wet. That's cool. I enjoy the little details like that. Especially if you go in the water and it's like, you go in like halfway. This is mainly for different games, but if you go in there like halfway and then your your pants are wet like up to your waist and then your shirt's dry or it's a little bit wet, like depending on how deep you went. I really enjoy like the little details like that where it's like they thought about that, you know, putting it in there. Alright, I think I'm gonna put it in low plus, turn on the diff lock, and we'll just cruise in these ruts in in low plus and see see how it goes, sorta. Unless it's too slow, then we'll uh, get ourselves out of it, I guess. But yeah, this thing is... I mean, the, the three trucks that we picked for this is kind of funny. Um, you know, a, two tractors and a, a cat. But I'm not sure where the K700 ranks in terms of off-roading like mudding capability. I know it's far less than the K7M, but I don't know. Like I know the Zixi is really strong. I know the Cat 745C is really strong. I know the Colobs are pretty good. Um, or, I mean, you could say pretty strong as well, I guess. And uh, what else? The the Azov Antarctic is really good. Try to keep one tire out just to keep up a speed, but it's not. I don't know if it's working or not. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know where the K700 would rank amongst all those trucks. I don't know. Where, I guess the K7M with dualies is better than all of them. As far as like getting unstuck, you know, the the speed going through the mud. It might. It might get beat out in certain areas just because its top speed isn't great. But yeah, go just straight going through mud it's uh, one of the better ones or the best one actually right now but yeah I don't actually know where the the K700 ranks amongst those trucks if I had to guess it'd probably be in the last out of all those ones just because those ones are all really good but I'm not sure K K700 is I would say decent in mud it's you know, it's it's good at times, and then it's bad at other times. Or like, slow, I should say, at other times. But, yeah, overall, it's decent, I would say. It's on the lower end of all those other trucks, but still, you know, on the high end overall in the game. Especially with how big the tires are. Alright, here we are. Let's get it delivered. Sorry about the view there. Let's turn the angle here. 8600 and 980 for that. I was kind of hoping to see a little cutscene with these three trucks sitting here, but I guess not. Alright guys, that is going to be it for this video. As always, stay tuned for the next one. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to watch another video, there's a random video on screen and another playlist. Please be sure to share the video, like it, comment, and subscribe. Turn on those bell notifications so you're notified when I upload. And until next time, peace.